Hello everybody, glad to have you watching. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to do a simple seven step value scale in graphite. Before we begin, make sure that you have the following supplies, paper, a range of sharpened pencils, graphite pencils that is, 2H to 6B, an eraser, and a ruler. Now remember to keep your pencils nice and sharp, which makes for neat and accurate drawings. You'll want to work progressively, that is slowly blocking in the values, and you'll want to avoid getting the value too quickly as it is hard to erase back if you make a section too dark. Now as I begin, you see that I have a sheet that has two value scales printed out from my computer. This is going to help me match values. I'm also using just the top one for this first value scale drawing. And on my paper, I've drawn two rectangles which are one inch tall by seven inches wide. The top rectangle is further divided into one inch squares. The bottom one does not have any of those divisions and it's going to be used for our next value scale which we'll do in charcoal. Also to keep things nice and tidy, I've taped around each large rectangle with my artist tape. Now, just as an aside here, I'm using this awesome pencil sharpener. This is called an AFMAT automatic pencil sharpener. I got it through Amazon. Um, they're not too expensive. It's really great. It charges via USB uh, and it gives you an extra long point on your pencil, which is kind of unusual. And I really like it. So first thing to do is to fill in the leftmost square with the darkest tone that you can get with graphite. So I'm going to use my 6B pencil for this since it is the softest graphite that I've got in my little set. And I'm going to go over it several times and in different directions to completely eliminate any white of the paper. So I don't want any little white specks showing through on uh, this little square. As you can see, I'm kind of pressing and going in one direction. Then I will change directions to make sure that I fill it all in nice and, and neat. And I go right up to the edges of the tape. I want to be careful not to press too hard up against the tape. It'll push the tape back and I won't get a nice square. So do be careful. You can see how I'm holding the pencil. I'm kind of choked up on it as if I were writing. It gives me a lot of control and I can push pretty hard. Incidentally, I have a few sheets of paper taped underneath my drawing paper today to make sure that I get a nice smooth drawing. So I'm just checking it against the light in the room, going perpendicular now with new strokes. Now, as you see, as I go, I am not using my fingers to smudge or smear anything. I do use my the edge of my sheet of paper. It's kind of like a mask so that I can get a nice crisp edge on this square. You can use a ruler also for something like this. Take your time, do a good job with this. No need to rush. What else you got to do? All right, now sharpening up a new pencil. The second square that I'd like to fill in is the middle one. I can use my printed sample here to try and get an approximate 50% gray. So I've switched to my HB pencil for this one. I don't want to go too soft with my graphite because it might uh, get there too quickly. So I want to do a nice careful job going slowly. So don't rush this. Also, uh, again, you see that I'm not going to be using my fingers to smudge or smear the graphite. I want to avoid that on this drawing. Trying to get a nice even tone. Should be no pencil strokes visible. Again, change up the direction. That really helps. Sometimes I work in long strokes, sometimes little sort of curly cues or squiggles. That way it will hide any pencil strokes.
Again, take your time. Now, to help me with this drawing, I um, just am taking my printout, folding the paper a little bit so that I can put the value scale edge right up, the printed one that is, right up to the edge of the, my drawing. And I can check the values. And you can see I sort of go back and forth with the ones to the side. Uh, one of the things that really helps is if you blur your eyes when you have those two squares next to each other, that way it eliminates any detail and you can judge whether or not the value is correct or not. That looks pretty good. So it's really great that for the left box there, I'm just going to leave white since that's the lightest value you would get in a drawing and that for this one on the right is the darkest one. So that's got to be completely black. Now I just have to go through and fill in the other boxes. I'm going to switch here to some softer pencils. Notice how I hold the pencil. I think I'm using maybe a 2 or 4B at this point. You can see how much quicker it arrives at that value. But when you are drawing, you'll see that it's got a little bit more of a grainy appearance because that graphite is just touching the tops of the, the paper. Again, switching directions. But see how I'm holding the pencil way back on the end? That way I don't get too crazy and press too hard too quickly. I'm involving more of my wrist and my fingers as I go. I can use my ruler to get a nice crisp edge between the values, sort of shade right up against it. Again, no smudging with your fingers. Constantly check every now and then with that printout that you made to judge your value, see if you've got it matched yet or not. Sometimes I lift it up just to kind of blow off any crumbs or anything that sort of lands on there. Or to tip it, sometimes it's a little hard to see with the, the lighting in the room. Graphite in particular has a certain sheen to it. It's very reflective and silvery. And so sometimes you have to sort of adjust your vantage point to your drawing to see how you're doing. Again, using the ruler, give me a nice hard edge. Sometimes I switch up pencils. I think I've moved to a harder pencil back down to my HB just to kind of even out the texture and tone within that square. Also be really careful about where you place your hand while you're working so that you don't smear the side of your hand. I'm a lefty and I tend to do that a lot. So I'm just very conscientious of what parts of my drawing I've worked on and where to put my hand so that I don't make a, a mess. Here I'm using the edge of the paper and my kneaded eraser just to clean up the edge of that square. So it's nice and straight. Now we're just gonna speed it up here. You can kind of see how uh, Doing each of the squares is the same as the others. I'll use my B pencils on the darker side of the value scale. And I'll switch to my H pencil, H, 2H, and HB for the lighter side.
it is a little hard to see here, but the difference in value from that first and second square is uh, very slight. In that second square, I needed to see a little bit of paper showing through. The first one, right, there's no paper showing through, so it doesn't quite reflect excellently here in the video. I apologize for that. Here I am just going to the lighter side. This is where I really don't want to push down very hard. I don't want to creep up to that value, so I kind of go back and forth. As you work, you might have to go back to one of the previous squares that you have already rendered and make some adjustments so that you can see sort of an obvious step change in value as you move up or down the value scale. So that's what I'm doing here and just kind of get those edges nice and making sure that it looks like it goes from one value to the next. Sometimes the edges and corners can be a problem. All right, when I'm done, I just want to carefully remove the artist tape from around my piece, being careful not to tear my paper, to go slowly. I'll make sure also that I don't touch anything that I've drawn. It could cause some smearing. I can go around and do any touch-ups. There are any edges that need to be cleaned up and fixed. Also, break out the eraser and take care of any fingerprints. Make sure that the edges are nice and straight. Then I'll take it off camera and spray fix it with my workable spray fixative. You want to remember that anytime you spray fix stuff, you want to take it outside or use a spray booth so that you're not breathing in the vapors of that aerosolized um, spray fixative. It's not good for your lungs. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. And if you want to see any more art technique videos, consider subscribing. Bye.